To find the limit of the natural log of sine x as x approaches pi from the left, it's perhaps best to first ask what's happening to sine x as x approaches pi from the left. If we look at that limit, the limit of sine x as x approaches pi from the left, well, we could just plug pi in because sine is continuous. Sine of pi, perhaps you recall, is equal to zero. This is, of course, why we can't just plug pi in in the original limit because the natural log of zero is not defined. But this does allow us to rewrite this limit without the sine function. We know that the inside of the natural log as x is approaching pi from the left, is just approaching zero. So we could rewrite it as the limit of the natural log of y, as y approaches zero, but specifically y is approaching zero from the right. This is because if you think about the unit circle and think about what it looks like when theta is approaching pi from the left, pi is over here, and from the left means that theta is less than pi, but it's approaching pi. Less than pi means it's coming in from that direction. This is what from the left looks like in the context of the unit circle. And up here, where theta is approaching pi from the left, up here, the sine function is positive. That's why y is approaching zero from the right. When y approaches zero from the right, we're thinking about values getting close to zero, but that are all greater than zero. And so now we can think about this limit in pretty simple terms. What's the natural log of a really small positive number? And the answer is a really big negative number. Because remember, the natural log of y is the power we need to raise e to to get y. So if y is some super, super tiny positive number, well, we would need to raise e to some really big negative number so that we would have 1 divided by e to some massive power. That would produce a really tiny positive number. And if you just happen to know what the graph of the natural log function looks like, which hopefully you do, it looks like this. And so we can see from the graph that, yeah, as we get close to zero, as we get close to the input being zero, the natural log is just going down to negative infinity. And so that is our limit. It doesn't exist. More specifically, it diverges to negative infinity. Keep in mind also, if you had screwed up this part where we change the variable, for example, if you had accidentally put y approaching zero from the left, that wouldn't make sense because y approaching zero from the left means that y is negative and the natural log of negatives is not defined. So changing your variables like this to simplify the limit can be very helpful, but make sure you're careful with the direction of approach. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.